Well, hello again. In this example, you will practice sketching qualitative deflected shapes and identify the direction of the reactions. We're going to look at this particular beam. First thing to do is to go ahead and evaluate what the basic loading scenario is. We've got load on span BC and also what the support conditions are. What do those tell us? What we know right off the bat is that because of the roller at point B is that point B cannot move up and down. The pin at point C means that it cannot move up and down either, or side to side for that matter. And then we notice that we don't have any load on member AB. So with those kinds of conditions found, we can then sketch the deflected shape of the member that has the load on it first. We know that with a uniformly distributed load, it's going to deflect in the downward direction, something like this. Now for member AB, we need to be able to finish out the sketch. Since it has no load to change anything on it, it is going to come out here, and it's going to come out as being straight. Some people struggle with knowing when it should be straight and when it shouldn't. If you are ever in doubt, remember that wherever you have moment, you will have curvature. And thus, if you don't have moment, then you don't have curvature. And so member AB doesn't have any load in it, and thus it doesn't have any moment. And you can just evaluate that in your own mind by taking a cut here, looking at that free body diagram. You've got shear, you've got moment here as far as being possibilities. But since you have no load on that member, then these out of necessity will come out to be zero. Once you can confirm in your own mind that the moment there is zero, you know that there will then not be any curvature. The next task is going to be to identify the reactions. Now, mostly these reactions are developed based upon the deflected shape, but in some respects we will be looking at equilibrium to help us do this. For instance, at point C, we know the summation of forces in the x is going to tell us that that is indeed zero. For the direction of the vertical reactions, sometimes it's very obvious, in particular in this example, identifying these reactions as going in the up direction seems rather intuitive based upon the distributed load and the direction it's going. However, would like you to also think of what would the deflected shape look like if a reaction was not present. So let's say the vertical reaction at point C. The deflected shape, you know, would look something like this because it would be free to move up and down at C. And so one has to ask yourself, well, in order to push it back into the shape that it should be, which direction does the force need to be applied? It would have to be applied in this direction to push it back up into place. Now whether you make specific sketches or just think of it logically in that way, you can work from that perspective. And the same thing here, if we're looking at the vertical reaction at point B, remove that reaction in your mind, sketch what the deflected shape would look like, and then recognize that in order to get it back up into place, it's going to have to push up. And that's what we've got. So here is the deflected shape, and here is the direction of the reactions for this particular case. This concludes this example, and as always, it's a beautiful day to study structures.